How's it going everyone? Pop-Tart here, welcome back to the Air Team channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the McDonnell Douglas MD-80 in 1 to 1 scale. The MD-80 is a narrow-body airliner with fuselage-mounted engines and a T-tail design. It was developed from the Douglas DC-9 with a stretched fuselage and modernized cockpit, and first flew in 1979. These days it only sees extremely limited use around the world with a few charter companies and cargo carriers, but it was a very popular airliner in its heyday with over a thousand produced. The last major fleet retired with Delta Airlines in 2020, who had a total of 120 MD-88s in service. Now, technically speaking, the MD-80 is a family of aircraft rather than one single model, so this build serves as a total of four aircraft, the MD-81, MD-82, MD-83, and MD-88. The differences between these variants are all internal, with variations in fuel capacity and engine performance, and they share the same exterior. The only exception is the MD-87, which had its fuselage shortened by 5 meters, so that would be a separate build and is not covered in this tutorial. So, as for the build itself here, as I mentioned, this is in 1 to 1 scale, meaning that every 1 meter in real life is equivalent to 1 block exactly. If you are building an airport project or something in this scale, this will be perfectly to scale with all of our other 1 to 1 aircraft on the channel. Now, before we get started, as always, this build does make use of our very own custom Aero Team texture pack. A download link to the latest version of this pack can be found in the description below if you don't have it already. Now, if you are stuck using the default pack, if you're following along on console or something, I will always do my best to show you how to go about building this in default, but please do keep in mind that I highly recommend using the Aero Team pack instead if you can, as it'll look much better. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on this tutorial! So, first things first, here's some dimensions for you to help you figure out where you want to put this. This aircraft is 46 blocks long, 33 blocks wide, and 10 blocks tall. So just keep that all in mind as you're getting started. And with that all set, let's get going on layer 1. Alright, so for layer 1 here, first things first, if you are building this aircraft on the ground with the landing gear in contact with the ground, as I am here, you'll be starting two blocks off the ground, with a one block gap in between, just like this. If you are building this aircraft in flight though, then that won't matter and you can just start wherever you'd like, but do keep that in mind otherwise. Now, as we build the fuselage here, in the Aero Team pack, we're going to be using the wool material, coupled with the purple stairs and slabs, for the smooth and shiny wool coloration for the aircraft. If you're building this in default without access to these materials, you can use quartz or smooth quartz instead as an alternative, but this is what we are using here in the Aero Team pack. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be referring to these as the wool stairs and slabs throughout the video, but again, that's the purple stairs and slabs here in the Aero Team pack. So with that, to get started on the fuselage here, we have this one block existing, one block off the ground, as shown here, and this is going to be a row of 17 blocks going back. So we have one already, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen in total. On the front of this, we're going to place a wool uh, top slab, just like that. Now, ducking underneath here, we're going to grab a birch button, and this will place on the underside of the forwardmost block, right there. This will be aligned perpendicular with the aircraft, like so. Next, out to the side of the second block back, skipping this first one, we're going to place a birch trapdoor on the top half, out to both sides. Now in the Aero Team pack here, again, this is a uh, wool blending texture. In default, just use an iron trapdoor as a substitute to blend with the white, but we're using the birch here in the Aero Team pack. Next, we're going to grab the jungle buttons, and we're going to crouch down once more here. Now, uh, skipping two blocks back from that one block that we placed the birch button on, so not that one, but these two here, one and two. On the third block back, we're going to... Actually, I need to slide across a little bit here. We're going to drop one and two jungle buttons on the underside of these blocks here. Again, that's a two block gap right there. These will be aligned parallel with the aircraft this time, just like this, for some detailing on the underside. And once more, the jungle button is a wool texture to blend with uh, the <laughs> wool material that we're using here. In default, you can just uh, continue using birch buttons instead, but that's what we were using there. So with that in place now, we're going to come to the left trapdoor only, just this left one. The right side is asymmetrical. On the left side here, we're going to be placing 14 top wool slabs going back here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, like so. And let's just quickly detail this left side before we get started on the right here. So, skipping the first seven top slabs here, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, right here. On the eighth block, we're going to place a temporary block out to the side. 
we'll grab a stone button, place that on there, and now we're going to use some world edit tricking to get that uh, button placed in place of that temporary block. So we'll grab a stick, or any old item, type slash REPL0 to switch that over to the replace tool. Select the uh, button there by left-clicking on it, clear that out, and then paste it over that temporary block by right-clicking like so. Now, if you don't have access to world edit for the tricks used throughout this tutorial, what you can use instead, if you'd like, is the debug stick in the most recent versions of uh, vanilla Minecraft. However, this is not a tool I have access to on the server here, so I can't demonstrate its use for you here. If you're already familiar with its functionality, then that's great, and you can put it to use here. If not, then you can find plenty of other instructional videos on its use throughout YouTube, or if you just can't be bothered or don't have access to it either, then you can just leave these little details out. They're not required for the build, it'll still be an MD80 either way, but it does help greatly with the accuracy if you can include these. So with that out of the way, we have that stone button in place there. This is for a static port on the side of the aircraft, by the way, I don't believe I mentioned that. On the block immediately back from this here, we're going to grab a torch this time, place a temporary block out there, torch, select, and paste, like so. This will be for a small taxi floodlight on the side of the fuselage here. Next, we're going to skip two blocks going back, one and two, and on the third block here, we'll place another temporary block, and then another stone button for a static port on the side there. And then on the underside here, we're going to count five blocks back from the uh, block with the two jungle buttons there. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. I'll just mark that off with temporary block there as I have to crouch beneath. We'll grab a lever and slide down here and place that right there facing backwards like so. Again, that's a five block gap in between from the last button up there. And that's for an antenna on the underside of the fuselage there. Next, we'll get the right side of the fuselage going. So, back from this trapdoor right there, we'll place seven top slabs this time going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we're going to grab a quartz top slab. We'll place a single quartz top slab right there for the uh, forward cargo door. Then one, two, three, and four wool top slabs going back. Out to the side of those first two of the four there, we'll place two temporary blocks. On the forwardmost one, we have a torch, again for that same uh, taxi floodlight on the side there. And then a stone button immediately behind that for another static port there. Then going back, we have a quartz top slab for another cargo door here in this uh, forward cargo compartment, and then a single wool top slab back right there. Next, we're going to grab two um, wool stairs. We'll place an upside down stair facing in towards the center of the aircraft, just like this, to start off the wing box. Now, going back from this here, we're going to place five blocks going back from the center. One, two, three, four, and five. And then five blocks out to either side to make this a five by three box. Now that we've got that in place there, we can use a bit of world edit trickery to uh, corner these stairs off and make that connection just a little bit more realistic. But we had to get those blocks in first so it wouldn't uh, update those stair blocks and revert them to their original position. So for this, we're going to place an upside down stair facing forwards, just anywhere. I'm going to place this above here so I don't have to crouch below the aircraft to get to it. We're going to corner this off, facing towards the right hand side of the aircraft, like this. We'll select that and place it on the stair on the left hand side just like that, so it has only a half block indentation space right there. Next, we'll clear out that uh, sideways stair and place the upside down stair facing in the opposite direction. So it's facing towards the left uh, front side right there. We'll select that and paste it over the right hand stair like so. So it should look just like that. And now we can clear out those blocks right there. Now going back from this here, we're gonna place a single wool block in the center right there with a quartz half slab out to either side for the gear doors on the underside of the fuselage here. Then we have three more wool blocks going back from the center. One, two, and three. With three blocks out to either side. One, two, and three. Now we'll grab a dark oak button, which in the Aero Team Pack is a uh, red uh, texture just like this. In default, use an acacia button instead for a slightly reddish orange tint, but this is what we're using here. This is going to go on the first block of the three in the center right here, facing parallel with the, the uh, aircraft. This is for the uh, anti-collision beacon light on the underside of the uh, underbelly there. Now that we have that, we'll be placing a total of five blocks going back from the center. One, two, three, four, and five. On the left side here, we've got six wool top slabs going back. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And on the right side, again, it's going to be asymmetrical here, we have two wool top slabs going back, with a quartz top slab right there for the aft cargo door, and then three wool top slabs back right there. 
Next we'll place an upside down wolf's there facing backwards in the gap between those two slabs there, and then two quartz top slabs going back to start off the aft exit door and the underside of the tail cone there. And for one last detail here for this layer, we're going to grab the lever, and coming to this row of five wool here in the center, we're going to skip the first two, one and two, and on the third block right here, we're going to drop down below and place a lever facing backwards for an antenna on the underside right here. And with that, that will do it for layer one. Alright, so for layer two here, we're going to start with a wool half slab on top of the top slab from the previous layer right there, place a full block going back from that, then we'll grab the stone buttons. We have a button on either side here, and then one on top facing parallel with the aircraft, just like this, for a set of pitot tubes and uh, instruments around the nose of the aircraft there. Next we'll place another wall block going back, with an oak plank this time, behind that there, to kind of block off the interior of the cockpit right there. We'll place a full block out to either side of that wall block right there, and then one more going back, just like this. Next we'll grab the block of quartz, and we'll place one of these behind both of those uh, wall blocks right there. This will be starting off the left and right uh, forward doors right here. Next we're going to place four blocks of wool going back from each of these quartz blocks here. One, two, three, and four. And one, two, three, and four. Now we'll grab the jungle buttons again, and place these out to either side of that very last wool block right there. Or again, stone buttons in default. Next, going back from this, we're going to place an additional seven wool blocks going back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven on both sides there. Then we're going to grab the torches this time, and we'll place one of these out to either side of this last wool block right there. This is for the leading edge wing light, illuminating the leading edge of the wing in icing conditions. And if you're in default without this uh, 3D model right here, you can use, I guess, just a stone button instead again, instead of the uh, kind of stick-looking torch model in default, but uh, this is what we're using here in the Aero Team pack. Next, going back from this, this is going to be asymmetrical now, so only on the left side, not the right side. On the left side here, we're going to be placing 12 wool blocks going back. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then a block of quartz going back from that here. And this is the reason it's asymmetrical. This is for the start of an emergency exit on the left side here, that's only present on the left side. The windows will just keep going straight on through for the right side. Once we have that there, we'll place a single block of wool going back right there, with another torch going back there for the trailing edge wing light. And then to bring the right side up to speed, we're just going to place 14 blocks going back from that wool block existing right there. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, like so. And then just place your torch out to the side of that block again, so you have that on both sides in line there. Next, going back to this, we'll be placing an additional 5 blocks going back from that row existing there. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Next up, going back here, we have an upside down wool stair facing backwards, back from both of those rows right there. Then we're going to place a wool top slab going back from both of those, like so. In between the stairs, we're going to place a quartz half slab, with a second one going back right there to finish off the uh, exit door right there. Next, we're going to grab the polished granite slab this time. We'll place one of those as a top slab, that is, going back from both of those wool top slabs right there. In default, use brick slabs instead, but uh, the polished granite slab here in the Aeroteam pack is a red concrete texture, like so. And these are for a set of red markings on the side of the tail cone here, pointing to the emergency exit door. Next, we've got a uh, wool top slab right here in the center between those two, with a second going back. Then we're going to grab the jundle button again, and on the four most of these two quartz half slabs right here, we have a single one facing parallel with the aircraft, just like that. That'll finish off layer two. So for layer three here, we're going to start off with an upside down oak stair facing forwards on top of the oak full block from the previous layer. That'll just finish off blocking off the cockpit interior right there. Next we've got an upside down wall stair out to either side facing forwards as well, like this. And then a wall top slab going forwards from the oak stair right there. Next, we'll place a birch trapdoor to either side of the um, top slab right there on the bottom half against the wolf full block from the previous layer, just to round that off a little bit more there. And that'll also give the characteristic angular indentation of the MD-80's cockpit glass there. Next, going back, we have a full block of quartz back from both of those upside down stairs there, with a stone button on the outside of both of those right there. Behind this, we have a single block of wool going back from both of those quartz blocks there. 
And next we're going to be putting in our windows on this layer. These windows are going to consist of upside down wool stairs, like this, to give a quarter block opening for each of the windows. However, since they are facing forwards, they're a bit of a pain to each place in one by one. So what we're going to do is place down 16 temporary blocks going backwards right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And then leaving this last one in place, I'll just clear out all of those ahead of it, like so. And then I can place a second temporary block in line with that on the right side. Next we have 15 upside down wall stairs facing forwards. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And on the right side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. With the forward windows in place there, we can clear out those temporary blocks. Well, let's grab the quartz stair. We have two quartz upside down stairs this time, facing forwards again, for the overwing exit doors 1 and 2. And if you have world edit, we can also add on the handles as we did with the uh, other exit doors up there by placing two temporary blocks out to the sides of those uh, upside down stairs there. Stone button, select that with the replace tool and paste over. Stone button, select and paste, like so. Again, not crucial, but if you can get that uh, in place there, that does improve the build. So, after that, we're next going to place uh, only on the left side this time. Since we do have this emergency exit here, it is asymmetrical. We are going to place a second quartz full block on top of that right there, with a stone button out to the side right there. And forwards from this, five wool upside down stairs facing forwards. One, two, three, four, and five. And then going back here, we can just place these in ourselves. One and two more upside down stairs going back just like this. Next, we'll place six wool blocks going back on the left side here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Coming in on the right side here, we're going to place another six blocks in parallel with this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six right there. And then just eight upside down wool stairs facing forwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That should join up right there and finish off all of the windows. So now that we have that, we're going to grab a block of cobblestone this time, which I forgot to place in my inventory. My apologies. We'll place a block of cobblestone right behind each of those uh, blocks of wool right there with another block of wool back from both of those. The cobblestone there will just be helping to finish off the engines and we do put those on later in the build. Since this is such a small scale to work in, these don't actually have anything to do with the fuselage itself. That's just what they're there for. So once we have these single blocks of wool going back there, to finish off this layer, we're just going to place a row of three wool blocks going back in the center right here. So that's one, two, and three. And with that, that'll finish off layer three. All right, so to cap off the fuselage here, we have the final layer, layer number four. We'll be starting with a wool half slab on top of the oak upside down stair from the previous layer there with a black carpet out to either side right there for the eyebrow windows on the MD-80's cockpit here. Next, behind each of these carpets right here, we have a total of 34 wool half slabs going back. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. Should land right on top of that cobblestone from the previous layer there. And again, 34 blocks on the right side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. Like so. We'll leave that for now and come back to the front of the aircraft right here. Behind this forward most wool top slab, or half slab rather, right there, we have a single wool stair facing forwards right there. Next we have 36 wool blocks going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. Right there. Next time we go back to the front again, we're going to put in some detailing here going back. So we have first a jungle button. We're going to skip this first full block of wool right there, not the wool stair right there. But from this wool block here, we're skipping this first wool block. And on the second block, we have a single jungle button right there, parallel with the aircraft. Next, skip another block right there. And on the second block back right here, we have a lever facing backwards for another antenna there. Then skip a single block again. And from here, we have two jungle buttons this time going back, like so. 
Next, we're going to skip a total of eight blocks. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And on the ninth block right here, we're going to place a dark oak button again, same as we did on the belly. This will be for the uh, beacon anti-collision light on the top of the fuselage right here. Then skipping two blocks going back, one and two. On the third block right here, we have two more jungle buttons going back, like so. That'll finish off the fuselage detailing on the top of the aircraft right there. So then going back here, we're going to place a torch on the side of the first exposed block right here, so the third block forwards from the end of that wall row right there. Torch out to either side right there for the loader lights, illuminating the vertical stabilizer here. And then behind this, we're going to place an acacia button out to either side of this next block back right here. And in the RTM pack here, this is a black button texture. In default, use a dark dark button instead. This black button here is for a uh, vent on the side of the uh, tail cone right here. And for the final thing here, we're going to place in a set of three snow layers right here, behind this last block of wool. So that's one, two, and three. Now the thing about this here is that you might have to keep an eye on that snow layer right there. Due to its proximity with those torches right up ahead there, I have found that this might, uh, on occasion, just melt for you due to Minecraft's melting physics in proximity with light sources. If that does happen for you, what you can do is place in a temporary block in its place right there, place the three snow layers elsewhere, one, two, and three, then with the replace tool, make sure you're in the slash slash fast mode, if I can spell it correctly. There you are. And when you enter that, it'll tell you whether you're in fast mode or not, if it enables, that is. With fast mode enabled, what you're going to do is select that then and paste over. And what that should do is prevent it from receiving any block updates. And this did indeed solve that problem of it melting on my end. Otherwise, if you can't use world edit, this set of three snow layers is just one snow layer off from the height of a wool half slab here, which is a total of four layers in equivalence, as you can see here. So you can just use a half slab in its place right there. But we've opted to use this set of snow layers instead for just a slightly more accurate curvature of the tail cone right there. So use that if you can, otherwise there's that workaround. But with that, that is layer four complete. All right, so next up here, we'll be putting in the vertical stabilizer. For this, we're gonna come down to the very end of this wool row from the previous layer. On top of the last full block of wool, we'll place a block of wool right there on top of it, and then one more going back. Now, since that did just get placed adjacent to that snow layer I was mentioning before in the fuselage section, that block update might have broken its frozen nature, and it might now melt after this, so my apologies for failing to mention that, but you can just uh, do that replace tool trick again, and that will now prevent it from being further updated. That was the last block update it will receive here, nothing else is getting placed adjacent to it. But now that we have that uh, block of wool in place above it right there, we're going to place a second block of wool going up right here. Then a wool top slab going back from that second block right there. Block of wool on top. A second going up right there, and then one more going back. So it should look just like this. Next, going forwards from that row of two right there now, horizontal, we'll place a smooth stone full block going forwards right there for the stabilizer trim on the trimmable horizontal stabilizers here. Then another block of wool going forwards right there. Wool half slab. Block of wool underneath. Next, a block of wool down and forwards, diagonal. And another block of wool diagonal, like this. And then round off the um, connection right there with a half slab, like so. Then we can fill in this empty space in the center right there with wool blocks. And then to finish off the rounded top of the MD-80's vertical stabilizer right here, we're going to, again, place in snow layers here. So we have, on top of this forward-most wool block right there, a set of two snow layers, and then three snow layers, and then two snow layers, just like that, to make that curvature there. And one last thing to note, on the same note as the uh, fuselage there, I have had these melt on me as well as I was setting up this tutorial here. So if that does happen to you, where these melt for whatever reason, Again, just use that same world that it trick there. So I still have the set of three snow layers selected, so um, we'll, we'll place in our temporary blocks right here. So you'll place over the set of three on the center block right there, and then just place two just anywhere. Select that, and clear that out if you'd like, and place that over the forward and rear uh, temporary blocks right there. And that should get it tricked into staying in place without melting on you. But with that, that is the vertical stabilizer in place. All right, so for the horizontal stabilizers right here, we're going to come to the smooth stone full block right there, 
Again, that's the uh, marking for the stabilizer trim in the center of the vertical stabilizer right there. Coming out from this here, we're going to place a smooth stone top slab right here. I'll be starting on the left side, building the left for, uh, horizontal stabilizer first, and then building the right one afterwards. So, with that top slab in place there, we'll next place a half slab down a half slab layer forwards from that, like so. Next, we'll switch over to cobblestone slabs for the darkened leading edge of the horizontal stabilizers here. So we have one cobblestone slab going back from this, then two out at an angle, like this, then a single one out at an angle right there. Switching back to the smooth stone slabs again, we'll next place two coming out and back, like this. And then skipping this rearmost one, we'll place a smooth stone slab going in from the forwardmost of the two, like so. Then switching over to the stone bird slabs for the elevator detailing, we'll place a stone bird slab coming in towards the center this time. And then up a half slab layer and in towards the center forwards from this here, we have two uh, top slabs right there. And then in at an angle, a single stone bird top slab right there. Now to fill in these little gaps in the horizontal stabilizer here, now that we have the outline in place, usually what I like to do is in the larger scales, uh, build the uh, layering outlines to kind of get ready for the uh, wing, built in the same kind of technique. But this is such a small scale here that we just have two little gaps to fill in right here. So for this outer one right here, this is going to get filled in with a smooth stone slab on the same layer as all of these around it. And this one is going to be a smooth stone top slab in layer with the stone brick top slabs right there. So, all told, your horizontal stabilizer should look exactly like this. I know it was a little bit confusing to put together, since in this small scale there's not really a whole lot of linearity with something like this, so just make sure that you have it built as shown here. And we'll do this on the right side now. So, again, from that smooth stone full block right there, top slab coming out there with the smooth stone, then one down a half slab layer forwards from that. Next we have one cobblestone top slab out, half slab rather, not a top slab, then two cobblestone half slabs out right there, and a single cobblestone half slab. Two smooth stone slabs going back, skipping that last one right there, forwards, one smooth stone slab right there. Then stone bricks for the elevators, we have one smooth stone slab right there, and then up and in, one and two top slabs this time, and then one top slab going forwards right there. And then filling in with the smooth stone half slabs, one half slab layer down there, and one top slab in right there. And that will finish off the horizontal stabilizers. Alright, so next up here, we'll be putting in the wings of the MD-80. This will be in a similar fashion to the horizontal stabilizers that we just built, but in a bit of a larger scale. We'll first be building the outline, and then filling everything in afterwards. So, to start off here, we'll build the wing root outline to give ourselves something to work off of. So we'll be coming down to the wing box right here. You'll see where we have this corner stair that we've marked out right there. Along the side here, we have kind of a flat face of wool blocks formed by that right there. So we'll be counting that as one of those. So we have one, two, and three flat wool edges available right there. On the third block right here, we'll be placing a stone top slab out to the side, just like this. And then we'll place a stone half slab on top of it, like so. That stone there is for the darkened uh, leading edge slat across the entire wing surface right there. Next, going back from that half slab on top, we have one and two wool half slabs going back, and then a quartz half slab with a top slab down a layer right there. This will be for the overwing exit markings on the uh, surface of the wing right there. And then a stone brick top slab going back from that last quartz top slab right there to start off the flaps. And then in that gap underneath there, we have one, two, and three smooth stone top slabs to fill in that space right there. Next up, we'll be building the leading edge outline. So, where we have that top slab and the half slab right there, coming out to the side of this half slab, we'll be placing a second one, just like this, then two half slabs out right here, then one half slab, then two half slabs, and then one half slab right there. Next, coming up a slab layer, we have a single top slab, directly out to the side of that half slab right there. Then one more top slab coming out right there. That's two top slabs. Then another set of two top slabs right there. And now switching over to these smooth stone slabs, we have one smooth stone slab out at an angle just like this. We'll place one more going back from that right there. And now we can grab the temporary block and our torches and place in some lights on the edges of this uh, set of two right there. So, placing a temporary block going forwards and backwards from that row of two right there. 
we'll place a torch, grab the replace tool, select and paste, and then select and paste over. So we have a forward torch on the forward block and a rear facing torch on the rear block right there. This rear torch right here is for the strobe lights on the rear of the wingtip right there. And this torch on the front is for the fold out landing lights on the uh, wingtip as well. And now what we're going to do is grab a red carpet and place that on the forward most of the two slabs right there for the red position light on the left side of the aircraft. Now returning to our layering, we're going to work our way in towards the center with the trailing edge. So coming back from this, uh, well, coming in towards the center from this rear top slab right there, we'll place one more top slab, just like that. And then we'll switch over to the stone brick slabs for the aileron detailing on the outboard section of the wings right here. So, in towards the center, at an angle, we have one, two, and three stone brick top slabs, just like this. Then, coming in towards the center at an angle, a smooth stone slab right there, this time, for the gap between the flap sections and the ailerons right there. Then, directly in towards the center, Stonebrick slab right there, then dropping us down a slab layer, one Stonebrick slab right there, like so. In at an angle, one, two, and three slabs right there. And now we're going to grab the blue concrete as a temporary block. These will be marking out the flap track fairings in the wing right here, which we'll be putting in after we finish off the wing layering itself. So where we have this row of three right here, we'll be placing one temporary block behind this middle block right there, and one more below it like so. So you have a set of two right there. Now, I'm using the blue concrete right here for myself, kind of as a standard across the tutorials, but you can use whatever temporary block you'd like, given that it, of course, stands out from the wing itself, so you can find it again later. This really isn't a big deal at all on a wing this small, but I just like to include that standard across all tutorials so that when we hit a wing as big as a 777 and 1.5 to 1 scale, which we've done before, it is much easier to work with in that way. So, Next, in towards the center here, we'll be placing another temporary block right here, just like that. And again, a second one going down from it, like so. Now, from this top block of the two right there, we'll be placing a uh, stone brick slab going forwards from that right there, on the same level as the ones we've been working with previously. And then one more in towards the center right there. Then drop down a half slab layer directly uh, in from this right there, one uh, top slab down below, just like that to join up with the wing root right there. So with the outline finished here, for the top side layering, we only have two layering outlines to worry about in this wing here. It's very flat, especially in this scale. Coming down to the wing root right here, where we have this first layer, where the slabs first shift up a layer right here. We're going to come to this uh, stone brick block right there, and then just place one half slab in at an angle towards the center, just like that. And that'll join up with that uh, slab in the wing root right there. And for our last layer right here, Again, where the slabs shift up a layer. From this uh, stone brick slab right there, we're going to place one coming in towards the center from it right there, and then a smooth stone slab forwards from that, like so. That'll finish off all the outlines there. Now I'm just going to quickly fill in the flap sections before we fill in the rest of the wing. So from that uh, first layering outline that we completed right there with that single top slab, or half slab rather, Coming out from this right here, we're going to place one and two more half slabs right there to make that a row of three across. Then going out from this right here, back here, we have another set of three right there to join up with the next layering outline. And then from this here, where we have that single half slab in that layer, we're just going to place one more uh, in between those two stonebird slabs right there. And that'll finish off the uh, double fit section of flap outlining right there. So all that's left to do for the top face now is just to fill all of this in with the smooth stone slabs. So everything that's outlined within a section right here, you can see this is all in one single layer right there for both this and this section up there. We're just gonna be filling everything within that outline in with the smooth stone slabs, just like this. And up here as well, that will finish off the top surface. Now to clean up the underside here, you can still, it's still leaving a bit of a gap in each of those layers right here. So for the underside layering, we're gonna to come to the wing root again right here. We have this forward most uh, smooth stone slab right there behind the uh, stone slabs of the leading edge slats. Out to the side of this one behind that smooth stone, or behind the stone top slab right there, we're going to place a smooth stone slab right there, then one more out at an angle, then a second going back right there, and then a stone brick slab in at an angle right there to connect up with the flaps. For our next layer out right here, where we have that uh, stone half slab right there, we're going to place a smooth stone slab out at an angle from it right there, and then in towards the center, one uh, stone brick slab right there to connect up with the flaps again. 
And again, that is all of the layers in place right there. So what we're going to do now is just fill out in uh, that section right there with the smooth stone slabs and this inboard section as well right there with the smooth stone. And with that, the geometry of the wing itself is complete. And the last thing we're just going to do for this here is put in the flap track fairings. So we have these two temporary block sections here that we've marked out for ourselves. Starting with this outboard one, working our way in, we're going to grab a stone brick slab. We'll place a stone brick top slab going forwards from that temporary block right there. And now right here, we're going to grab the stone brick stairs. We have an upside down stone brick stair facing backwards, going forwards from that temporary block right there. And then a stone brick half slab, or top slab rather, going forwards from that upside down stair right there. McDonnell Douglas has a very pointed uh, kind of flat panel design for their uh, flat track fairings that they use across their aircraft. And so that's what that's replicating there. But with those flat track fairings in there, that is as simple as it is. So we're just going to clear out the temporary blocks right there. And that is the wing in place. So all that's left to do for the wings now is to mirror this on over to the right side of the aircraft. You can find a timestamp back to the start of the wing route in the video description below, and after the section of the video before we continue as well, I'll be giving an overview of that just so you can make sure that you've mirrored it all over correctly. So with that, just build the wing again in mirror fashion on the right hand side of the aircraft, and I will catch you once that's done. So this is what your finished wing should look like on the right side of the aircraft. As promised, here's a little fly around just so you can make sure that you have everything correctly. And if it's all built right, it should look exactly like this. So, the last thing to do for this wing now is just to replace this red light on the uh, right side of the aircraft here with its green counterpart for the green nav light on the right hand side of the aircraft. So, here for this we'll be, we'll be using the uh, lime carpet in place of that red carpet over there. So, it should look just like this. And with that, that is the wings done. Alright, so next up here we're going to be putting in our two Pratt & Whitney JT-8D200 engines. So, starting off here, We'll be coming to this very last uh, upside down stair in the uh, row of windows right here. To the outside of this, we're going to place a single smooth stone full block right there. Yes, that is going to cover up that last window there, and this is accurate to real life, because even in the real world, the engine does line up with the last few windows in the uh, interior there, and so those last rows there in the interior seating just get a full view of just engine cowling out the window. So. That covering up there is perfectly in line with that. And underneath this here, we're going to place a jumble trapdoor on the top half of that block right there. Now, in the air team pack here, and then, as you can see, the jumble trapdoor is a smooth stone texture. In default, just use an iron trapdoor instead. Now for the body of this going back here, we have a total of four uh, wool top slabs going back from that trapdoor right there. One, two, three, and four. Then four wool blocks on top of that. One, two, three, and four, right there with a fifth going past, just like this. And then to round all of this off right here, we have four uh, birch trapdoors against the edge right here. One, two, three, and four. Or again, iron trapdoors in default. And then five birch trapdoors going back on top of this right here. One, two, three, four, and five. Should make a curvature looking just like this. And then for the engine exhaust here at the rear, we're going to place a cobblestone full block with an upside down, or actually a regular, cobblestone stair facing backwards, like so. On top of this here, we're going to place two light grey carpets to kind of curve that off there. That'll make the indentation there for the bucket reversers, the scoops on either side right there. And for the actuating hinge for this, we're going to grab a stone button. And with world edit here, we can place a temporary block out to the side of the upside down stair. <laughs> I keep saying upside down, I'm sorry, the cobblestone stair right there. We'll grab a stone button, select that with world edit, and paste over like this. That'll finish off those bucket reversers there. And with that, the JT-80 is complete, so we'll just be building the same thing on the right-hand side of the aircraft here. No asymmetry at all, it's just going to be a mirror build. This one I will be building on camera here. So, again, out to the side of this very last window right here. It's just on full block. Trap door underneath that right there. One, two, three, and four. Wool top slabs. One, two, three, four, five blocks of wool. Five trapdoors on top, four trapdoors on the side, just like that. Then we have the cobblestone full block, stair facing backwards, two carpets on top right there, and then temporary block out to the side of that uh, stair right there, if you're able, and stone button, select and paste over, just like that. And that is the engines complete. So, with the engines in place now, that is everything for the in-flight aircraft.
If you are building this aircraft in the air with the landing gear retracted, then that is everything for the MD-80. You are done with this tutorial. Congratulations! Just skip on ahead to the outro for some last important bits of information, and you are done with this video. Otherwise, if you are building the landing gear extended, let's get going on that. Alright, so starting off with the nose landing gear here, coming to the nose of the aircraft here, skipping the first full block of wool right there with the button underneath it, on the second block back right here, we're going to place a block of black concrete powder underneath it, just like this, with a stone button out to either side, like so. Now, if you're building this in the air with the landing gear extended, like on approach or something like that, you'll probably need to use a uh, block of string underneath the concrete powder right there to prevent it from falling, or a barrier, or whatever invisible block you'd like to use. And then on the rear face of that tire now, we'll be placing a lever flipped facing upwards just like that for the gear strut, and that's all there is to it for the nose gear here. So, now we'll be moving on back to the main landing gear. So, where we have this quartz half slab in the uh, underbelly of the aircraft right here, we'll be leaving that in place here. The gear doors uh, do close back on themselves when the landing gear are extended. But what we're going to do here is coming to the outside right here, where we have this quartz top slab right here in the wing route. We're going to knock that out and replace it with a quartz upside down stair right here, and then place our black concrete powder again underneath that right there. It has to be a um, quartz upside down stair right there for the um, to preserve the um, overwing exit markings on the top of the wing uh, face right there, but that'll just put in the uh, landing gear strut right there. Next, on the inboard side of this concrete powder right there, we're going to place in our stone button again for the uh, wheel rims. We won't be able to on the outboard side right here because in its place we're going to place a jungle trapdoor on the top half of that block right there. And then uh, with the stone brick top slab right there above it, we're going to knock that out and replace it with a stone brick upside down stair facing to the outside of the aircraft right here. That'll be for the uh, wing gear door right there. And one last thing that we can do here is just to round this off a little bit more nicely so it's a flat panel instead of cornered. To do this with World Edit, we're going to come out here just anywhere. We'll place an upside down stone brick stair facing outside again right here. Select that, and then paste over the corner stair right there. And that will uh, finish off the curvature of that gear door much more nicely. All that's left to do now, though, is just to build that on the right side of the aircraft. So, coming over here again, we have that quartz top slab right there. Knock that out, upside down stair in its place. Concrete powder below. Trap door out to the side. Place that uh, st slab with a stair right there. And corner it off if you are able. Select and paste. That's the wrong block, my apologies. Stone slab right there, paste over that, and then in towards the center right here, the stone button for the wheel rims. And with that, that is everything for the landing gear, and the MD-80 is complete. So, congratulations on completing the McDonnell Douglas MD-80. Thank you so much for choosing an aero team design. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it as a part of whatever project you are using this for. Do feel free to use this in any kind of publicly available project you'd like, given that you, of course, provide proper credit to the Euro team for these designs. So, if you have built this aircraft, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. A link to our Discord server is in the video description below. Feel free to drop on in and show us what you've done. If you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing to the Euro team channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. Make sure to have a look through the 1 to 1 scale playlist on our channel as well for more builds in this scale to see if there's anything else that catches your interest. Anyways, that is just about it. So, thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.